Hey guys, it's Mike Sword, video and podcast producer with the SAE CDS series, and we are back with you. Guys, first of all, I've missed you. Of course, we didn't get on location that much last year, and uh, I do miss it going out and uh, uh, filming all the craziness and see what's going on across the country with the uh, CDS series, but that's okay. Everything is rocking and rolling for 2021, and that's exactly what we're talking about today and why you should be registering and uh, uh, what is that going to look like for the 2021 series. I'm excited to see a lot of changes. A lot of changes that are already in the process, in the can. And of course, got sped along with last year's uh, uh, events, <laughs> I will have to say. Uh, it's been absolutely crazy. And of course, rolling through all the craziness with me today is going to be uh, Jamie Knopf, University Program Coordinator with uh, SAE. How are you doing, Jamie? Uh, Kaylee Zundell, the uh, Education Program Manager with SAE. Hello. And Sarah Guffey, the program support manager. How are you doing, Sarah? Hi, everybody. So we're going to get into what this looks like in 2021. We hope you guys are uh, uh, registering, getting ready to register, uh, and uh, we'll see you virtually, physically, et cetera, in this next year. But first, let's get into kind of how did we get here and uh, and what does 2021 look like? But first, like, let's talk a little bit about how did we get here? What was the process so that this kind of evolution of the series uh, because of the uh, unfortunate world events that are going on right now? Well, um, as you guys all remember, uh, the 2020 season kind of threw us for not even a small loop, but a large loop due to COVID. Uh, luckily enough, we were able to get off one of our air design competitions in the Queen's Nimmerville uh, event as well. Um, unfortunately, then everything else, you know, we, we did had to uh, pivot, you know, the, the word of the year for 2020. Uh, we did have to pivot to a virtual platform, which kind of, you know, through both our students, volunteers and our staff uh for a little bit, uh, a little bit of a different direction, um, and then uh, as as we move forward to our twenty twenty one competitions, we decided on this new format based on a bunch of um, different data that we had collected. Our some of our staff, you know, had gone out individually to university websites, we put out surveys to capture student data to see what they were also going to be facing this coming year. We also talked to a lot of our volunteers and our sponsors, you know, because the programs, you know, though they're, though they are for the benefit of the student, they also have value to our, our sponsors and volunteers. So we needed to look at that whole picture, you know, after we were able to do that, you know, taking into consideration all the uncertainties that are still out there uh, due to COVID, um, you know, our, our staff sat down and we tried to develop uh, this year's format so that it was, you know, um, the best product that we could put out there, still providing, you know, the benefit to the students, uh, volunteers and sponsors that we had. So obviously we learned a lot. It was a trial by fire uh, <laughs> with this change. You know, we get to smooth that over for the next season and uh, and it's going to be it's going to be a uh, it looks like a decent mix between, uh, uh, you know, what what had to happen last year and actually kind of plan for this year more than a month in advance, I guess, at this point. Right. So. Um, so what does that next season kind of look like uh, for those that are signing up for it for the first time or returning? So for for this year, for 2021 season, we've split out our competition to be a two parter um, for most of the series. Students will be able to first register for what we're calling the knowledge event. Um, and the knowledge event is, is basically going to be hosting all of our traditional static events that you would see on site in the first couple of days of the competition. This is something that we know we can guarantee students participation with. A lot of our universities are, um, you know, either strictly uh attending um, classes virtually or in some side, some sort of uh, hybrid model where, you know, some students are, some students aren't. A good number of our universities ha are lucky enough to have, you know, machine shop access, even if it's, you know, fairly restricted. But there are still a very large number of student teams that don't have that access. So by participating in the knowledge events, you know, the students are still, um, you know, they're still able to um, you know, go through the whole engineering design process and, and they're still able to, um, you know, gain the valuable exposure to the, the industry professionals with engagement um, opportunities that we'll, we'll still be working to have. 
you know, and, and, and as part of our um, collegiate design series programs kind of across the board, you know, we have some learning objectives identified, um, you know, as, as we all know, the, the education aspect isn't necessarily the technology or the engineering skills that they are learning, um, you know, that is done at the university level. But what our learning objectives for the students that are competing in our programs are, you know, um, soft skills like the project management, the budgeting, communication, being able to work as part of a team. Even in this, you know, world of pandemic, it's changed, but it still exists. You know, instead of in-person meetings, maybe you're having a lot more of Zoom calls and, and, and Microsoft team meetings. You still have to look at the rules and regulations and apply that to a design, you know, very similar to what professionals do in industry with our SAE standards. The design, building, and testing of a, of a um, testing performance of a re real vehicle, that changes slightly to some aspect. But one thing that this push to the virtual world has done is, um, is actually kind of maybe a foreshadowing, so to speak, of what a lot of industry is doing. You know, we're seeing a lot of our industry partners making a move, you know, in their future process by incorporating a lot more simulation because that reduces the number of prototypes and, and testing of those prototypes, which can be a very expensive, um, you know, very expensive to the company. So um, they are, you know, moving to, to, to simulate much more they much more than they currently do because that will result in, um, you know, cost savings for them. So teams can kind of use that same philosophy here. Um, you know, it's okay if your team who's not in your machine shop, there's still so much work that can be done prior to physically building the vehicle. And I think one of the things that is easily lost because we are always on site, you know, there, there seems to be a, um, you know, the, the perception that the vehicle is what the judges are building. Yes, they are looking at it and they are seeing the craftsmanship and everything that you're putting into the, the vehicle. And it helps, you know, to some extent having that real, real testing, you know, data. But if you're a team who's able to communicate all that same stuff through the design, the simulation testing and everything you've done, um, the communication aspect, the knowledge that you're putting into the vehicle, whether it's in a simulation world or through a real product, and still what the judges are going to be reviewing and evaluating. So, and then obviously, you know, one of our learning, our last learning objective really is, um, you know, development and preparation of technical documentation. And, and this goes through a different format for our series. Some are still writing papers. Others are doing what we're calling this year design review briefings. A lot of industry, you know, a lot of our volunteers in industry, you know, they don't write papers as much anymore, but they do a lot of weekly, monthly type of um, management briefings on projects that are all in PowerPoint. So the, the process of still communicating that high level knowledge or engineering need is still there. Um, whether it's a paper or um, a PowerPoint presentation. So, um, so we're still teaching, you know, still teaching that aspect. And Kaylee, uh, Clean Snowmobile is only doing the knowledge event. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So, um, you know, the knowledge and validation events is where we're breaking up the competitions. Um, most of the events are able to have validation events that we are going to do our best to make sure we are able to get on site. Unfortunately, a lot of that is going to, um, you know, completely uh, rely on what happens with the pandemic and um, the local and um, local state and venue policies that are in place um, due to COVID. But for Clean Snowmobile, um, we we will be operating the knowledge event only. And, um, you know, students will still have to do the MSRP and the design, a lot of work. A lot of that work takes place for industry prior to the actual build of a vehicle anyway. So that is an exercise the students will still be able to um, participate in and, and won't see much of a change to. Um, obviously, with not having validation event, the the larger part of the competition 
um, with the the dynamic events that are testing the the emissions, the noise, and um, fuel economy, things like that can't happen. So what we've done this year is we have a great group of key volunteers that have developed um, what we're calling the virtual dynamic events to be able to take place through 1D model simulation. So um, again, um, one of the reasons we've done this is that our, our thought is that this is a year where the teams can virtually test um, multiple ideas before selecting the best ones. And, um, you know, perhaps once they define that best one and decide on it and move forward with it for competing in 2021, maybe it is something that they'll be actually, they'll actually be able to bring on site then in 2022. And that way they'll actually have that the real uh, data validation, you know, um, on site. So the tools that they will develop this year will definitely propel them to being more efficient and competitive um, and, and honestly more desirable engineers for, um, you know, for industry. Excellent. So we're really still moving the ball forward uh, re- regardless of the, of the situation. That is our goal for sure. <laughs> And and this is of course reflects you know as you mentioned challenges uh, that people are facing in the industry right now as well and uh, it, it really is kind of the uh, ultimate uh, 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 adapt to any situation for for the students as well because you never know what's going to happen exactly yeah I mean a lot of our industry um, you know volunteers and sponsors you know have have said this exact same statement to our students you know through a number of different um, platforms, you know, some of them were, you know, talked about it in the 2020 judging, you know, Q&A sessions and things. Um, Last year, we also had some technical presentations um, that took place after the static judging. Um, We had a fall kickoff already this year where, um, you know, we had several different presentations and probably at least in, in, in half the ones that I saw, there was always some, at least one sentence, you know, that has directed that same, you know, comment that, you know, everyone has, everyone has made, had to make a change. So, I mean, even our staff here at SAE, you know, we've had to make a change to some of the ways that we're doing things too. Jamie, of course, as we talked about last year, you know, there was a big shift in the middle and a lot of this had to be kind of figured out on the fly versus the normal format we expect from the CDS series. Obviously, we've got a lot more time to prepare. Can you tell me a little bit about um, how that's going to be smoother, how it's going to be different, how it's going to be uh, 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 more effective than, than even than uh, what we had last season uh, uh, as a kind of mid, midterm replacement as things were happening around us? I would love to. And I would love to say that we are, <laughs> um, you know, 100% prepared for the 2021 season and, you know, COVID's not going to stop us, but I, I can't make any guarantees, but I will say that, um, you know, we had lots of growing pains and we had a huge time crunch to meet um, for the 2020 season. And we do have um, a very solid plan and um, things outlined to meet everybody's needs. Um, So we do hope that we are, we are in the right direction. So we, some examples of these things, um, you know, we used WebEx for the static events, um, and we are looking into a new platform to do uh, the knowledge events. When we've actually already tested this with the Auto Drive Challenge um, year four, and we had um, we had zero issues. We had great reviews from the judges and the students. So we are working very hard um, to make that happen for our knowledge events and to have a seamless event there um, because we know there were some issues with WebEx. Um, Haley talked about the kickoff event that we've already had, which prepared you for registration. We have um, a winter workshop in the works. We are working on more sponsor engagements for you. So we have lots of things like that that we're going to um, all have rolling out for you. And then we do have in place already, and I'm sure Kaylee can add more to this, um, but we do have the 60-day plan for the validation events. So 
we have lots of plans in place already and things rolling so that we don't have the time crunches that we had in 2020. And we have already started communication well in advance for lots of things. So we encourage you to continue to check your news feeds, download the app, um, make sure you like us on social media so that you can stay up to date with us on any changes that we might have for um, knowledge or validation events. Um, Jamie, you mentioned the uh, sponsor engagement that we have opportunities for this year. One thing that's um, interesting about the 2021 season and uh, what we've already experienced in the 2020 season is um, just that that normal, typical on-site engagement piece that you have where you can be talking face-to-face with, you know, a design judge from Polaris if you're a Baja team or, you know, somebody from Bosch if you're Formula, Lockheed, Arrow. We didn't have that where you could just be on site and, and and talking directly to those people. And also we didn't have that um, the, the typical booth space where you could physically walk up and walk away with some knickknacks from, from sponsors and, and um knickknacks, Sarah? Yeah, knickknacks. Like <laughs> show her age call it or I don't know, giveaway items yeah. like juices or whatever. <laughs> So anyway, we don't have that this year um, in the way that we've traditionally always had that. But Jamie mentioned that we do still, we've been working hard to have uh, engagement opportunities still with sponsors from industry and students. And we can't stress enough how important it is to take advantage of these opportunities. It's probably really easy like I, you know, I was in college not that long ago and it's very easy to just not do the thing, right? It's so much easier to not do the thing than it is to do it. And I'm here telling you that you should do it because, um, you know, engaging with these companies, we had the fall kickoff event and we did have some students take advantage of talking to sponsors, but uh, as I popped in and out to different sponsor booths, there were some sponsor booths that weren't um, trafficked as much. And it was kind of disappointing because there is so much opportunity to talk to these sponsors and to potentially even get yourself a job for out, out of school or even while you're still in school. There's internship opportunities and, and different things like that. And we're working hard to give you those early engagement um, opportunities. So historically, um, Lockheed Martin's a good example. Their their hiring cycle didn't quite line up with a regular season, um, a regular on-site season. So they would sometimes miss that. Um, you know, you, you meet somebody on site, you know, Lonnie from Lockheed Martin meets somebody and he's like, wow, these, this person's awesome, but they didn't necessarily have a, a, a job for them, um, or, or a place for them yet. But now we, we are giving these early opportunities so that you can make those engagements earlier in the year than you typically did before. And you never know who you might meet or, or hit it off with. So it's definitely valuable to do that. We do have the sponsor portal um, that is up and running that you guys could access um, already. That's found on your CDS web. Um, so that's an opportunity that's always available. But Sarah is correct. Um, all of the opportunities that we do provide you are very important to, to not only you, but our sponsors um, throughout the program. So we do highly encourage you to, to utilize the opportunities that we, we provide you. The other day I was uh, talking with Jason Fields, who are, um, is our Baja design event captain and, and works at Polaris. And we were talking about this, you know, similar type of conversation and he said something and I asked him, can I actually quote you on that, you know, and use this quote? And he said, you know, absolutely. So, you know, from from the mouth of, of Jason Fields, he basically says that, you know, I attribute a lot of my, my success in engineering to, at Polaris to Baja SAE. I'm not sure where I would be or what I would be doing, but I am doubtful that I would be at Polaris and even more doubtful that I would be a senior vehicle architect at Polaris. Even though a lot of the fun has been taken out of Baja SAE this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the core of what Baja SAE is and why employers seek out its participants remain the same. 
The situation is difficult for all of us, but all we can do is make the best of the situation we are in. So um, I think what he basically said, you know, during our conversation that I've just read out to you is, is, is the, the whole heart of the whole of this podcast. Um, you know, we understand from SAE that this year isn't going to be maybe as fun as typical years, um, especially for those universities who can only participate in the knowledge event. But the, to, to know and to understand that you will still have that, um, that experience that is going to give you a leg up in industry, in your future career is there. Um, whether it, you know, like I said, is only participating in the knowledge event, going through all the steps you still have to do to complete the project, or if you're a team who is also lucky enough to then get on site at the validation events, the value that the programs are going to provide is still very much there. Yeah, it definitely is. And you'd be talking, you know, you're, you're still doing static presentations where you're still presenting to um, largely uh, volunteers that work in industry. And you have the, that opportunity to really impress somebody um, on, a, on a bunch of different levels. And I don't want to speak for Kaylee and Jamie, but I know for my own personal perspective this year, Um, There's a lot of things about 2020 and 2021 that's scary and different and new and and sometimes, you know, super annoying. But (laughs) there's um, a huge opportunity in situations like we're facing as, um, you know, as a whole world, honestly, right now, because adapting is painful sometimes, right? And some people are better at adapting than other people, but there's really a opportunity to change your thinking and expand your mind and your processes in a way that you probably never would have if you weren't forced to adapt and change. So I want you guys to kind of even from that that sponsorship side, think of Think of things a little bit different. Sponsors are looking for new and interesting ways to engage with teams and and support teams. We still have sponsors out there that are fully wanting to, you know, support teams. So, so use this extra time that you have that maybe you can't get into the shop to to work right now, but reach out to some sponsors. Um, Jamie mentioned that sponsor portal. It's um a good way to be able to submit your resume and um, in- engage with those sponsors. And it, it's also extremely important. Don't just assume that, you know, say, say everything goes good and our plan goes well, and, and we are able to host the validation of events as planned. Don't just assume that you're going to get that normal sponsor engagement on site that you're used to. Don't just ignore all of those opportunities leading up to that with the, with the knowledge event portion and these workshops that we are gave you and are still working on. Um, Even if we do successfully host these validation events, one, not as many students are going to be allowed on site due to social distancing restrictions that we're still working on. But two, um, a lot of companies still have travel restrictions put on, on their um, employees so you're going to see less sponsors on site than you're used to. You'll still have, you know, the, the people from Honda and the different people that are uh, working in tech and, um, you know, the different events. I say that specifically to Baja, but there, there still will be people from industry on site that you can engage with. But you're not going to have that normal, typical so, you know, there's not going to be a, a, I don't know, maybe there will be a tent, but it's not going to be filled to the brim with sponsors and students and everything, because that's just not responsible for us to do. And we are only allowed to have X amount of people on site at all. So we're, we're trying to find some creative solutions to this. Uh, but I, I really, really suggest you take advantage of sponsor opportunities earlier in the season through the knowledge event and through these workshops. Because you just, you, you can't rely on that validation portion, especially because who knows what's going to happen in the next month or the next two months or three months even, we might not be able to host the validation. We hope we will, but, you know, take advantage now and do the thing now. <laughs> it really is part of that adapting, isn't it? Uh, so, uh, but yeah, a lot of opportunities still there. 
and uh, and, and and everybody's everybody's used to uh, communicating online, so this should be a, 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 an easy transition for a lot of us at this point, right? We hope so, Mike. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, uh, most importantly, registration is still open for the knowledge events until um, November 18th. Is that correct, ladies? Yes. Uh, yes. November 18th, which and is Wednesday. Yeah. And, and I think it's important to remind the students at this time, too, is that um, you, you do have to register and participate in the knowledge event if you want to register and participate in the validation event. So um, yeah. just a reminder for, for teams, you know, that are still thinking about it. You do have a couple weeks yet to, to register for the knowledge event. Um, also, you know, the, the knowledge event, you know, payment is required within the 48 hours, you know? Um, and so that is, Nothing new this year. However, what is new is for teams who are still thinking about the validation event, um, registration will open on November 8th, well, 16th, 17th, or 18th, depending on the, the series. Um, but they will all close on no, uh, January 18th. And payment is not required right away. Um, as we announced earlier um, this fall in our competition plan and then the validation event plans that we've been able to put out there for um, some of the series that payment for those events will be required um, approximately, I think it's like 61 days out from the competition date itself. So um, with regards to that, I think there's one aero design event that that 60 days out is technically before that January 18th deadline. So Students who are registered prior to the January 18th will still be required to meet that deadline. Um, the students who then register after that date, but by the January 18th, um, it will obviously be required um, immediately. We talked a lot about registration. Jamie mentioned how it's still open. We do have a registration how-to video that we shared during the CDS fall kickoff event um, earlier this month. I'm going to ask Mike to include that in the summary of this post so that if you are listening to this and thinking, hmm, I really probably should register, but I'm not sure how, um, check out that video. And I also am going to share, um, we have a sponsor portal walkthrough. We talked a lot about sponsors and the different opportunities. Um, at, uh, Brian from digital engineering solutions that runs our websites. Uh, that company runs our websites. He did a walkthrough video of what it is and how you can utilize it. It's still very new and growing, um, but it's still, you know, learn as much about all the opportunities we have for you as possible. So those will be in the summary. And a lot of stuff going on, a lot of opportunities there uh, for all the students to be involved uh, of course, and I'm looking forward uh, to seeing everything and seeing, hopefully seeing everybody, uh, seeing a lot of you at the events uh, when we get to these validation events as well. And uh, and talk about things as we go, of course, on this podcast. Uh, if you're catching this anywhere else on the YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe on your favorite uh, uh, podcast provider. And, uh, and, and make sure you do subscribe to that YouTube channel because a lot of information, a lot of videos are uh, popping up there as well that can help all of you. Uh, along through the season as as uh, uh, new information gets out there uh, along with it. So um, any final parting words? Um, if you have any questions, if you're listening to this and you're confused by anything or have any specific questions um, about the season itself, please feel free to reach out to us at collegiatecompetitions at sae.org. Again, it's collegiatecompetitions at sae.org. Um, we try to get back to you within a couple of days. It is a little bit of a crazy, you know, time of the year for us, but uh, we are happy to help with any questions or concerns you might have. And um, one other parting word is that we totally understand that the, the times are a little bit weird and it's, it's different for everybody at each school and how they're na navigating the, the COVID-19 um, pandemic and everything. So we know that there are sometimes issues with payments and different types of things. If there is something restricting you and your team from competing, 
don't just automatically assume like, oh, I can't make, I'm not going to be able to make that payment within 48 hours. Uh, so we're just not going to register. Reach out to us. Reach out to us at collegiatecompetitions at sa.org. Well, thank you, Jamie, Kaylee, Sarah, for joining us uh, this week. And I hope uh, students out there, you're all getting registered, being safe out there. And uh, we're looking to uh, see you at uh, all these events virtually and in person in the 2021 season. So until next time, stay safe out there. Thank you for listening to Level 4, the SAE Auto Drive Challenge podcast. Make sure you download our app on your smartphone for updates and contact information. The show notes for this episode and all others can be found at autodrive.fireside.fm.